In this video, we will show how the PI system can be used to facilitate condition-based maintenance. We will start with a quick overview of basic visualization of data within the PI system. Next, we will show how the usage of events and notifications can help end users more easily evaluate the condition of assets, allowing said users to more efficiently schedule maintenance events. Lastly, we will demonstrate the configuration of the events and notifications that help users diagnose issues with equipment and processes. The PI system gathers and archives large volumes of data. This data can be contextualized, analyzed, and delivered to both systems and users via data access and visualization tools. We can use this data in real-time monitoring, root cause analysis, and to solve any other problems that require the connection of people to their data. As an end user, I can utilize an application like PyCoreSight to gain immediate access to information that, in our case, pertains to a specific asset. I can use PyCoreSight to view existing reports or create my own to gain insight into how this piece of equipment is functioning. In our case, we've opened up a display pertaining to a boiler feed pump. From this display, we can see current and historical conditions for the equipment. Time series information such as bearing temperatures and pressures can be seen along with nameplate information and other useful data that can be used to diagnose issues for root cause analysis or to monitor the, the equipment in real time. This not only helps us determine why an issue occurred, but could also help in preventing said issues from occurring in the future. We can take this a step further though and let the PI system flag critical events and send notifications when conditions are not ideal. This would allow us to take the time that we would normally spend searching for these events within these visual visualization tools and use it to troubleshoot the issues at hand. From an end user standpoint, we could shift from periodically checking and browsing through reports to relying on the system to flag critical events and notify us when there are issues with a piece of equipment or process. In this example, the PI system has sent us a notification via email. This notification provides key information that allows us to determine what operating conditions were out of band. The trigger condition, asset information, as well as other pertinent data are all embedded in the email. The notification has also provided links to existing displays and reports that are useful in troubleshooting issues with this boiler feed pump. Clicking on the PI Coresight link will take us to a display similar to what was shown before. This time, however, I'd like to highlight one of the key features in Coresight that would allow an end user to more quickly determine the health of an asset. In addition to viewing the time series data, the user can browse through any recent critical events that have occurred for this boiler feed pump. As can be seen here, several events have occurred over this time frame. Many are not tied to the bearing temperature violation that caused the notification. This indicates that the boiler feed pump could be suffering from chronic issues that need to, at a minimum, be addressed via visual inspection. In cases where we wish to view the data associated with a specific event, selecting on said event, we'll set the time context of the display accordingly. This allows us to better visualize operating conditions during the pertinent excursion. Our notification also provided us with a link to a data link report that similarly makes use of events flagged by the PI system. We can access the, this report by clicking on the respective link. The report provides a summary of the vibration data for the selected asset as well as aggregates for the time range. This provides a snapshot view of our feed pump allowing us to determine our operating conditions over the desired start and end time. If we wanted to use the data stored within the PI system, to determine the precise time periods over which we were operating on a band, we would likely need to pull vast amounts of data into our report using traditional data link functions, such as compressed data or sample data. Rather than browsing through the archive, we can instead request events from the system through new standard data link functions. These event retrieval methods allow us to set search parameters that allow us to fine-tune the data that we request from the PI system. Now we can see that over the past month, the boiler feed pump has had numerous events associated with it. Low discharge flows, low pump speeds, cavitation anomalies, and of course, the event that triggered the notification in the first place, the bearing temperature violation. Now we can sift through all of these individual events trying to get a decent understanding of how many are occurring and in what frequency, 
or we can use some standard Excel features to easily summarize this information for the user. For this report, we have created some charts that quickly summarize the overall health of our selected asset. These two charts can be used to provide a very quick overview of how the boiler feed pump has been operating over the past month. A low number of events would indicate that everything was fine with the equipment and that we could refrain from creating a maintenance event. However, in this situation, we can see that there have indeed been numerous events that have occurred over the time period. Discharge flows, cavitation anomalies, bearing temperature, pressure anomalies, and all of these might indicate that a visual inspection or work order would be warranted. Now that we've seen how the end user can benefit from this event analysis, we will look at what was configured in the PI system to generate these events and notifications. We can administer the system through the PI System Explorer application. First, we would need to add context to our data by utilizing the asset framework. The boiler feed pumps are all governed by templates that determine what data will be made available for the asset. In this case, you can see that a variety of data is available. We have temperatures, flow rates, pressures, vibration analysis that are all being collected and stored in the PI system and are likewise made available through this structure. End users can access this data through any of the standard PI client tools. We can also reference nameplate information, set points, specification limits, and other information that can likewise be made available through this structure. The data can be used to create the reports and displays that were seen previously. They can also be used in analysis that can turn the raw data into something more actionable. In our case, we wish to flag critical events and make them available through the Event Frame database. After selecting the Analysis tab, we can see all of the different types of analyses being used to flag critical events in our system. The logic, in the case of the bearing temperature, is a simple comparison. We are flagging an event when the inboard and outboard bearing temperatures violate predefined limits. In the case of the vibration data, we are doing something similar, but instead of hard coding our limits into the analysis, we are referencing data that may come from an external table. If these limits are changed in the table, then the analysis will use the updated limits to flag the critical events. Lastly, we are using certain key conditions to send notifications to end users. In this case, we've determined that the bearing temperature violation, in this case, we've determined that the bearing temperature is a critical event that when triggered should send emails to key individuals. The notification trigger condition is similar to the one that was defined for the event frame. These notifications can be customized to provide embedded data, links to existing displays, and links to data link reports. Other information and links can also be embedded. As was stated previously, all of the configuration for a boiler feed pump, for our boiler feed pump, is stored within the boiler feed pump template. Making changes to this template will result in making changes to all the unique instances of the boiler feed pumps that have been governed by this template. As such, if we need to add some new data to the template, or we need to add a new analysis to create new additional events, adding them to the template will roll them out rapidly to all of the unique instances within our database. This greatly simplifies not only the initial creation of assets within the AF database, but also reduces the time spent on future administrative efforts. The collection and contextualization of data using the PI system allows end users to very quickly diagnose issues with equipment and processes. Flagging of these events through the analysis tools and the delivery of key notifications to our end users allows us to more easily create maintenance events based on real-time and historical operating conditions. By utilizing the data that already exists in the PI system, coupled with some basic analyses, we've started the process of moving from the more traditional scheduled-based maintenance to condition-based maintenance.